Well, I'm Maria Oyala uh, from Finner. I'm the lead designer for our mobile app and in-flight entertainment, which is the seat back uh, screens and our uh, onboard Wi-Fi portal, uh, along with that the kind of crew app that we use to control the seat back IFE. So the theme now is the prototyping <coughs> at Finner. Uh, I wanted to dig a bit into the word prototyping, so a bit of a semantics. Uh, this is the word book definition of uh, prototyping, uh, the activity of making basic models or designs for a machine or other industrial process. Uh, I asked around our design team what for them prototyping means. There was uh, quite a range of answers. Uh, again, I think sometimes the kind of word prototype and prototyping uh, as an activity are kind of mixed. Uh, Personally, I don't think prototyping necessarily needs to lead to a certain type of prototype. Uh, I especially like actually this one, one, one here, prototyping makes me a better designer. Uh, and that's actually exactly what I think as well. Uh, for me, prototyping is almost like a state of mind. Uh, it's about doing design, not about talking design. And I, I don't know if any of you have seen this uh, frontiers of design uh, film or documentary, uh, which is available online now for free to watch as well, uh, where there's this uh, statement that we've been spending a lot of time in recent years just talking about the design, but not actually doing design or the craftsmanship uh, of design. Uh, maybe part of it is the design thinking uh, trend or something similar, but in my mind, prototyping exactly that, that we're doing design, we're testing what is out there. Uh, also, one of the important things is that being ready to be proven wrong. This, for me, especially when uh, as a young designer, was extremely difficult, actually. Like, uh, starting to do the prototypes and, uh, like, realizing that I, I'm not right. Like, I have it all wrong. And then having to scrap that idea and redoing the whole thing, or then doing, redoing parts of it. And kind of, yeah, maybe it took some time <coughs> until you realize that it's not personal. It's your work, and it's your job to be proven wrong. <laughs> and then trying to be as accurate as you can. Uh, prototyping also, I think, is a craft for all designers, uh, regardless what your field, service design, UI design, uh, but also not only for designers. So we have a few examples here where we have developers uh, working closely with our designers doing our prototypes. What we have at Finner, we have a, like, a range of teams. Uh, we have the in-flight team, which I'm part of, a mobile app team. Uh, also in the kind of same area or kind of range, we have Aurinkomatkat. Aurinkomatkat is this uh, package holiday uh, company that is uh, like a sub-brand, or not even sub-brand, it's uh, like a sister company to Finner, but the designers are actually working in our design team. Or like, they're working in their own team, but we have a kind of design team. It's a mixed situation. <laughs> Uh, then Finner.com, our website. At the moment, we have two versions of that. Uh, we have the current Finner.com, and we're now rebuilding our uh, Finner.com website to well, match the expectations of uh, current day. Uh, then, mm, yeah, the mobile app. I don't know how many of you use the old mobile app. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah, that's my... Uh, like team as well, and we actually have one mobile developer here as well, iOS. Uh, then we have payment, it's a, like a separate um, team itself. It lives among all of these, but it's a, like, a, like a defined, really like a detailed one action or one task to be completed uh, type, of the, type of team that they uh, focus on, really like a, the super details. Whereas, for instance, in flight, we have no control most of the time. Every flight is different. Uh, we work in situations where our devices might be offline. Even the crew devices might be offline. Uh, there might be crash crashes on the, the seatback IFEs during the flight. 
like we have no control, so that's also one reason why we don't go into that level of detail and depth that, so like for instance, payment team can go. So for us, like not going to the details actually allows us to be maybe a bit better because we are more flexible. Finner.com, of course, they have it all. They have like booking engine, managing my booking. They have, well, destination information, ancillaries, everything. So they have like both the kind of details of the booking engine and the kind of varied or the kind of breadth of uh, content at the same time and tasks like the uh, user or customer tasks to be completed. One thing actually from the uh, beginning, uh, we did the uh, Slido. So that too much focus, I have to cheat, uh, too much focus on features and not enough on user research and solution validation. So this has been, of course, a problem for us as well. I ticked that box. Uh, and Finner, as an older company, legacy company, we had a lot of good things, uh, but also a lot of bad things that come, or things that maybe are not current time anymore. Uh, but that's exactly why we do prototyping. So we have evidence on what should be done. And we have tests like that, that we can test and we can communicate and use that information then to do business decisions with that we can do whatever decisions needed. Uh, of course, some things still fall between the cracks, uh, but that's something that we cannot always <laughs> escape. And also, a bit of a spoiler, we haven't reinvented prototyping or prototypes to that extent. Uh, what I'm going to show you is just how we do prototyping. In there. So, yep. So, my favorite paper prototyping, like the basic of the basics. Uh, I use it for myself or my own purposes, basically on a daily basis. Uh, nowadays, maybe like using it in a kind of shared context or uh, in context of a team, I think that's uh, not that relevant anymore, well, in most of the cases, um, which I will come a bit later. But for instance, this here, this uh, uh, paper prototype of a mobile app economy seat, which we're actually launching pretty soon for iOS, um, was uh, during a design review that we could easily uh, communicate the idea, how do we want to do this transitional animation? Uh, I kind of made it a bit fancier, but like the original prototype was just to post this doing like this. Uh, but basically like even like doing these kind of animations or transitions with paper, uh, it's extremely like, uh, efficient. Uh, so then there was uh, this onboarding passengers to Wi-Fi portal. This is the constant problem that we face. We, due to technical limitations, we cannot use, for instance, captive portal or uh, some other uh, means of onboarding. So we've been exploring different ways uh, to inform people that we have Wi-Fi on board. How do they, can they get on the Wi-Fi? And uh, well, here is the testing of a QR code that do our customers understand it. These are just blue tagged on, on seats, but maybe it's a bit of a uh, interesting detail that we do test on our planes. This plane uh, in particular, it was uh, Actually, I can't remember if it was in hangars or at the gate, ready, like, uh, ready for departure for the next flight, but we do have access to our planes when needed. This is still uh, kind of ongoing, and we, like, we use the previous prototypes also to talk with our technicians, what can be even made, what are the, like, the safety regulations, the super tight regulations, of course, on board, uh, what can we do, what shape can we do, and all of these, although this is not like a digital prototype, but still somewhere in between. Then, uh, well, I couldn't add it here, and actually I couldn't add any prototype from our .com, since all of them were more or less uh, confidential. But for instance, we have this uh, paper prototype of uh, our pricing and bundling model made by our designers and developers uh, in collaboration, where if you select one thing, then what happens? 
what are your options from there on. And it has a huge influence on the UI or UX and even development that can be done. Then basic prototyping. Uh, this is basically how we pre replace the um, paper prototypes, this kind of super fast uh, prototyping style. So especially we have a design library in use more or less. Uh, using a design library and for instance Sketch or, uh, well Sketch is may maybe the fastest one at the moment uh, with the design library, but for instance this prototype took me three minutes to make. Uh, that prototype I did 10 versions in one day that all of them were kind of ready for user testing. So also not going to that like uh, like uh, super complex prototypes, just enough to do, do the kind of basic ABC flow. And the kind of, of course, the kind of strength or a pro, pro point for a basic prototyping or the sketch or envision actuator if you do it there, you can easily spread it out for testing. You can easily spread it out to stakeholders, uh, which is not, of course, like that's possible with paper prototypes, uh, which we have also done, like, but only in context of uh, design sprints, where it's a more um, controlled group of people. So, well, here, audiobooks, payment methods, the audiobooks are also coming. Uh, during this spring. But then complex prototypes, uh, we're using Axure for most. And this is, both of these are from Aurinko Matkat, and those guys are really low, basically set the bar for us when it comes to prototyping. Uh, and they also prefer working with these like uh, extremely wide and complex prototypes. They, of course, they do have like their whole um, customer task uh, have a kind of varied, like you search your flights, you do your dates, you search your hotels, uh, you pick your ancillaries or extra services. And uh, here, actually, this was an interesting story. This prototype was done for quality user testing. They uh, tested people on the air, at, at the airport, um, and they wanted to see how people are finding these uh, city breaks. Uh, tab on the front page and well sadly we didn't get the original uh, prototype we obviously have a problem in our version control <laughs> but uh, we got the enhanced prototype so the first prototype that they did uh, so we were trying to find this Kaupungilomat here the first prototype that they did uh, zero out of 15 uh, participants found that tab. Although our assumption or the, this assumption of all like the, the designers, the developers, the product owners, everyone was that of course that's a, like a usual pattern. People should be able to find it. No one did. Um, there's a, because uh, well also the, like they were searching for London and London is not a sun destination but it's a city destination. So what they did then, uh, based on what their findings, was that if you type in London to the first search field, that there's then the kind of tip that move to Kaupung Kilomat or city breaks. And from there, the zero went to 100%. Also, this actually increased uh, Aurinko Matkat sales by three, well, or the Kaupung Kilomat sales, sorry, not Aurinko Matkat, but the Kaupung Kilomat sales by 300% just this one tweak. And that basically would have been a tweak that would have gone un unnoticed unless they've done this prototype on actually the previous one and then this to uh, check it. Um, on the right side, or is it your, yes, your right side? <laughs> There's a bit of an example of a prototype. Mm, it's a nice prototype, but, and a complex one, but, the purpose that it was built for doesn't really serve the purpose. So, of course, it's good to have it for communication within the team, also with the stakeholders. So what's, what's there, and this has been launched next week. Uh, I'm not sure if it's, uh, was it on Monday or Tuesday, but during next week, uh, called Omaloma, so that you can manage your holiday uh, 
in the web browser. It's, it's a bit similar to, to the Aurinko Matkat app as well. Um, but they, they did this actual prototype where you can configure uh, different states. Uh, that's what happens if it's before uh, the holiday, during the holiday, after the holiday. If what type of uh, ancillary or extra services or events you have on your timeline. Uh, and this was meant as a tool for developers to check what type of configurations are possible. Uh, in the end, developers came up that with their own tool, which was faster to make, more convenient for their own purposes. But, well, it was an exercise. And of course, we can use this for our like, user testing. And we will use this for our user testing. But for the original purposes, were like, uh, which it was made, wasn't that successful. So of course, when it comes to these complex prototypes, uh, the reason or reasoning behind why to do it is always a bit of a like, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but it's always a learning, learning experience. Yep, four minutes. Uh, other complex prototypes. Um, let's maybe start with the one on the right again. Uh, so this is actually, this was made with Axure again. Uh, and I wanted to take this as an example from our payment team. Uh, they are basically working with the tiniest details. And here they did, this actually <laughs> required two designers and one coder <laughs> to, do, to do this prototype. And again, we did this, like, uh, realized that a yeah, uh, developer could have done this like, uh, easier and well, faster just with using JavaScript. But it was also a learning experience for our uh, developers that they got to, got to use our prototyping tools or the Axure and see what's possible there, for instance, that you can do JavaScript in, in Axure. But basically that we had to communicate what we want out of uh, a payment form or expiry date form uh, from our kind of exter external stakeholder who is then doing that form. So we do to some legal requirements, we have to run our credit card form through an external party. Mm, uh, and we cannot do it ourselves anymore, so they have to do it. So we, and, but we wanted to like, be super, super precise. What do we want out of that form? So this needed to be done. Maybe the uh, way of doing it might need kind of re-evaluation. Re uh, re <laughs> How do you say it? Re-evaluation in the future. Um, but yeah, worth doing because now I think we got the type of form that we wanted. Um, on the left here, um, this is uh, actually what I would say a cosmetic prototype. Uh, one playing here. Uh, this getting from your mobile app to our onboard Wi-Fi portal. Uh, but this, the actual prototype, this I did just for this presentation, uh, the actual prototype was actually a POC that we did, a technical POC. Because uh, we, I, like, I could have done this, uh, but it, like, it didn't tell us anything that we needed to know. Because we're dealing with the kind of a, when you go on board, when you've switched to flight mode, uh, when does the Wi-Fi like, turn on and... Uh, all of the kind of uh, corner cases that we just didn't know. We knew it was possible, but we didn't know exactly how it was possible. So in order to kind of uh, prototype that, we did a POC. A POC and um, then basic, now actually that POC is maturing into an uh, actual feature. Uh, and uh, also going to be released during this spring. <laughs> uh, yeah, but also this was... Uh, great uh, exercise in this kind of a bridging between teams, the mobile app team and the in-flight entertainment team. Um, and of course, that's one thing that we aim for as well, like when we can do this type of uh, uh, between team communication, that's something that we're, and I guess in many big companies, people are lacking from time to time. Uh, same, I would say, goes for the payment uh, prototype I showed you previously for the app that we have used that to communicate with the payment team and our app team. Like, what do we want? What is possible with you and so on? 
So, kind of wrap it up in a way. The prototyping tools, tools that we use are uh, mainly Axure, uh, Sketch, uh, Paper and Pen. Those are the top three, definitely. Um, then others, like we have this kind of, uh, well, rule or like uh, allowance that if you find a tool that works for you, use it. Um, many of us have been just then gravitating towards Axure. Principle was one of the, like, uh, well, bubbling under. But then upcoming, um, we, we are doing these uh, scenario scripts and then props. So basically what I mean by props, for instance, is that we are setting up uh, this uh, mock-up of our cabins. So for instance, business class, and then we announced last fall that we were going to have a premium, premium economy uh, and then economy class. So for, for our kind of, a, it's a kind of setup for of kind of prototype to test prototypes in. Uh, so that we can test, for instance, what the screen, like the distance between screens and how can you do the kind, like what, what surroundings are you kind of working our products in when on board? And then the, the uh, scenario scripts for our, our crew. Like I said be, uh, before, we have like a, every flight is different. And we need to just see what are the kind of uh, situations, how can those be handled, how di like what different ways are there. So basically this means role playing, acting, and then doing kind of like reenactment prototypes out of those, if you wish, will. Then, uh, maybe kind of setting the context now, like at the end, our team, uh, our design team uh, at Finner turns two years old, actually tomorrow. Uh, I joined Finner 27th of March, two years ago, as did a few other our designers, uh, and so did many of our in-house developers. So we've been growing our in-house team during these two years consistently. Uh, and that also means that the prototyping process, like uh, or the kind of uh, work that we've been doing or the processes have been like, uh, well, uh, started during that time. Uh, so before that, Finner has been mainly using uh, uh, externals or subcontractors and prototypes are not exactly, have been like part of the deal in that sense that it's been more of this like, I say you do this and you do this. Uh, and we are now trying, trying to kind of train, <laughs> train our uh, business owners and uh, stakeholders to kind of do the kind of that we need to evaluate, validate, and we can do it this, this way using these type of things. And actually, you had the design sprints on your <laughs> list of methods, and that's actually a method that, uh, with few adaptations, we've taken into use quite successfully, uh, which is also that we produce a lot of prototypes during that time. And yeah, this was actually from our first design team meeting ever. Nowadays we're 13 designers and uh, growing maybe anytime soon or any day soon. And, and then, yeah, that's about it. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Maya. Really cool talk. Are there any questions right here? Thanks. Uh, one obvious prototyping tool for a designer would be to write code, front-end code. Mm. What are your views on that and what are the biggest barriers maybe to that? And yeah, um, We do have a uh, few designers who prefer to write code. Uh, I myself haven't trained that that much. I can do like basic HTML stuff but uh, again like if you find a tool that works for you then use it and some of our designers are using it. Would that maybe sort of bridge the gap between design artifacts and actual uh, development work? Are you mm. use on that? Yeah might be I like of course there might be uh, varied opinions but I, I have felt that in, uh, in Finner or in our teams uh, developers and designers are working pretty closely together uh, well, Dan might disagree, but <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but basically, the, I don't feel that we have that, that big of a gap 
between designers and developers. And the prototypes are mainly used as this kind of communication tools in any case. So, and usually, like for instance, the uh, prototypes I showed you, I will modify them on the fly when we talk with the developers. So it kind of takes equal amount of time or less even sometimes to uh, kind of get to that common understanding of what's possible and not. Yeah, I I was uh, I was quite surprised that because I, I feel like airline is pretty much a service business where you have so many interactions uh, with with your customers. So I I was a little bit surprised that you don't have like a service uh, prototype where you prototype different type of service mm. like, uh, face to face. And the reason for for that is I just read a book uh, called the, the Power of of Moments, mm. and they mentioned the the, the example of, of Southwest Airline, who is uh, showing that there was a study uh, according to which. The, the security announcement is always done in a very funny way, and it has had like a huge impact on the retention of, of customers and how yeah. people, you know, get you know back to to the Southwest Airlines. So, have you have you tried it out? Things uh, new things, you know, in the in your, the way you are servicing your customers. Yeah, that's uh, like we constantly are, of course, like striving to get towards that point, and uh, it's been actually mainly due to lack of resources, like uh, like just manpower in that sense that, but now uh, beginning of this year, we actually got a uh, designer joining Finner who is specifically oriented to this kind of service design, uh, like uh, scenarios and this um, kind of uh, internal uh, communication so on. So I, I hope that, and that was actually one of why I put the scenario and scripts there as well, this kind of uh, maybe like see what's out there to kind of uh, reenact and uh, see, but yeah, none, to this date that I know of. Yeah. Any other questions? We had something here. Thanks for the presentation. Um, those actors, uh, prototypes, how long the process took to make so complex prototype? <laughs> um, the Aurinkomatka prototypes. Yeah. Uh, I would have like I have a guess but somewhere between well the one guy who is doing those is like super 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 efficient so maybe for him it was like one day uh, but I know at least one of those was three days. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, do you have any design system related to the like web uh, components based on web components because uh, like in, this, in some case actually can be like it's it's a tool which can eat a lot of stuff. Yeah. So comparing, like, if you have a good design system based on web components or whatever, it could be faster that way than yeah. in Yeah, I, I actually, I think Aurinkomatka, they have the most uh, mature sy design system of our all, like all of our teams. And I think they are actually now uh, using those components also in Axure, um, at least partly. Uh, so, yeah, that's one of the reasons why they've chosen to continue with that tool.